All right, uh, last example that we're going to go over. Um, ladies and gentlemen, now what we're going to be talking about is a systems of inequalities. And today that's basically, that's basically what our lesson is about, um, even though, as you guys can see, that this is going to be very similar to what we have done, uh, you know, what I previously did and what we've done in the last class period. It's just really an extension. Um, so that's why we're not going to spend the whole day just working on these, but we're just going to incorporate it in with the rest of the lesson. So in this example, now I have two inequalities that I have. And basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be graphing the system where they um, are going to intersect or graph the solution where they're going to intersect. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I um, can graph these in their slope-intercept form. So this one I'm going to rewrite as x plus y is less than 4. And to go ahead and graph this, I'm going to want to write this in slope-intercept form. So I'll subtract an x. So I have y is less than negative x plus 4. Now remember, when graphing with a negative 1 as your slope, when you have a negative x, right? remember, we, we need to have a number. We need to have a fraction as our slope. So our coefficient, you have the negative. Remember, we can always write in that's a negative 1. That doesn't change the problem. Negative 1 times x is just negative x. But again, remember I said I always want to have it as a fraction. So I'm going to write this over over 1. Because negative 1 divided by 1 is the same thing as just negative 1. But when I'm computing my slope, I like to, Lee, I like to be able to use fractions with that. So now let's go ahead and graph it. So the first thing we do is plot the y-intercept, because I think that's the easiest thing to do. The y-intercept, remember, is going to be your constant. So I go up positive 4 on the y-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4. And I make a nice big dot. Then I use my slope, which says the change in the y-coordinates is one, negative 1, and the change in the x-coordinates is positive 1. So since the change in the y-coordinates is negative 1, I'm going to go down. Since the change in the x-coordinates is positive 1, I go to the right. Then I look at my inequality symbol, and I notice that it is less than, so it's going to be a dashed line. And then the last thing I'm going to do is use t uh, shading. So I'll pick 0, 0, or I test. I'll pick 0, 0, and I'll just plug in 0 in for x and for y. And I get 0 is less than 4, which is true. So since that is true, I am going to shade below. However, when I have a system of two inequalities, rather than graphing all the lines, I just like to use arrows for this, just so I can, I'm not always creating like, too much work. I know I'm going to shade down below the, below the uh, line in this case. Now we go ahead and graph this one. Well, this one's already in slope-intercept form, so it's a little bit easier. Again, notice that my slope as a fraction, that can be rewritten as 1 over 1. So now my y-intercept is negative 3, so I go down negative 3, 1, 2, 3. And then my slope now is going to be up 1 over 1. And since it's greater than or equal to, that's going to be a solid line. And then I use a test point to determine um, if my test point is going to be true or false. So I have 0 is greater than or equal to 0 minus 3. And that is end up going to be true again. So since that is true, I shade above. And then you guys can see that the only region where both of my inequalities are true is right here. OK? And that's it. So when you're doing a system of inequalities, all you guys are basically doing is just graphing two of them on the same.